All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to do the TIG welding right now. So for to do the TIG welding, you need two pieces of equipment. You need this rod, which is not to be confused with this one. You'll notice that this one has a different end. This is a replacement rod for the stick welding. Don't mess with it. You want, you want the one with the long wire, and this is an XLR connection. Uh, actually, no, it's a little different. But, uh, okay, and it's going to go in here. Your TIG torch is going to go in here just like your big one. Okay, the one's running close here. So on the screen, you're going to go into guest. I'm right-handed, so put whatever hand you are. You can do open exercise or you can go into here. Okay, if you go into this unit, you can go and open up. There's some technical information here uh, about, oh, I went into the quiz. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to go into the quiz. But I can go into here and I can look at all the theory of TIG welding and how it works. The safety. And let's see if I can find one again. So, but for this, we're just going to go to open exercise for now. You can go through those tutorials too if you want. All right, I'm going to do a butt joint because I think it's the easiest. 1G is my position because I think it's easiest. Carbon steel, 1 8 inch. Here's my filler, my filler uh, diameter, and the gas I'm using. Okay, I'm going to do one pass. Straight, continuous push let's make it easy okay so this is the screen now if you guys ever want to calculate the settings for your uh, TIG you need to go find information on the screen I'm gonna put a thing up on blackboard soon that shows you how to do it but the calculators there you could probably figure it out right now but basically you're gonna look at the metal you're using carbon steel the thickness what kind of filler classification and diameter you have and it will tell you what uh, how much gas you should use, uh, how much voltage, and all that. See, so right now, you need to up the gas. Oop. Up the amperage. Oh, it's way too high. That's what I thought. Okay. Go with 120. All right. So I'm going to look at this and hit the AR button. I'm just going to hold it here. Okay, a couple quick things. This little rod has LED lights. This is what's going to track uh, the rod while you're using it. You want to make sure the lights are turned up to the brightest. So look, one's off. The next, uh, Once it's off, the first one's low, medium, high. Make sure it's on the high setting. Make sure you turn off the light on your camera here. Okay, because this is going to help it read this. It also helps if you hold this plate up higher, like this. Okay. All right. Now, whenever you use this, you're going to kind of hold this like, have you ever seen the, how the drummers drum like this? You're going to hold it like that, okay? And then you're going to position it like this. This is your filler material. This creates the spark, which will heat up. It'll actually melt to get the metal together on its own, but when you have a little gap here, you want to fill that gap with material. So as you're welding, you're going to see those yellow lines. You want to make sure you put enough filler material to fill, make that, those yellow lines full. You don't want to go outside of them, and you don't want to stay inside of them. You want to touch them as best you can and stay inside. Okay? So a lot of people do like the tap technique, where they just tap so they don't put too much. That's like the most common way right there. And it leaves a nice clean looking weld. If you're really good, you can kind of key hold it right there. The only problem is that this doesn't simulate, as you're usually welding, this is getting shorter and shorter and shorter and you have to replace this. This part doesn't simulate that, so that's the only disadvantage you have here. Okay, I'm gonna get started. So, I'll loosen the helmet here. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and have you watch the screen. You can just watch me start and then watch the screen if you don't mind. Okay, so look, LEDs are facing me. That's what I need to make sure first. Okay. try turning down these lights right here and see if this helps to the next little setting. I think those lights might be overpowering a little bit. So you're going to have to play around with these and these little stick electro or these sticks are not too much accurate. Come on. Of course I shouldn't have had tried this station because I've already had problems with it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try turning this a little bit. Remember, you want to always see two sides of your... I just turn this dial and it seemed to work. Alright, here we go. So I need to get a little closer. And I can tap this as I go. Probably put a little too much in there. slow. Oh, stop. Stop registering my electrode there for a second. We'll see, it's definitely not my best weld. Alright. I thought I was having some VR issues. Let's see how I did. View results. Oh, okay, so see my arc length. I noticed I was struggling with that the most. Uh, I was holding this too far, too close. I kept struggling with that length. Link. Alright, so this would not count. All right, but you can look right here. Now, there, you'll notice there's a few new things. There's the rod travel angle and the rod work angle, which is the same thing. So, uh, the travel angle is this way and this way, this way, this way. The work angle is this way and this way. Okay, so my uh, travel or my travel angle is the one. So I wasn't quite holding it up. I don't know if I was holding it too high or too low. I can go in here and look. And uh, yeah, okay, I can tell right here if it says the distance. I was holding it too high. I was holding it too high, so I needed to hold it a little lower. All right, see how it's showing me those marks? That's where I was holding it too high. And I can see the parts of the weld I held it too high and see how it affected my weld. Okay, right there. Okay, so and here you can see some of that information from before. So whenever you're done, make sure you put your name up here and take a picture that says your name all the information, what kind of welding, what plate, what position. Uh, there's a whole bunch. There's nine different things I want on that piece of paper. Okay. You can also go in here, if you want, you can view your weld. You can see how I've turned that around. Are you in there? Can you see that? So you can actually see. And I'll have what a good and bad weld looks like on there. So you'll be able to tell that as well. All right. 
I think that's it. You know, some tricky things are if, if your AR is messing up, like I said, try paint, playing with the settings. I lowered the light setting, it seemed to help on this one. And I also moved this around, which seemed to help. So there's a couple little troubleshooting tips, tips that you can do, but sometimes it won't work, especially these, the TIG and stick welding are a little finicky on registering the, the torch in the plate. So you have to play around with it. All right, thank you.